Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. Something that was really confusing for me when I first got into iOS and mobile app development was navigation. Present versus dismiss, pop versus push, what UI navigation controller to use and when. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at the three modes of navigation available to us, see how they work, and hopefully demystify what can sometimes be a slightly confusing subject. All right, let's get started. Navigation in iOS basically comes down to three options. You've got your modal view controller, great for simply presenting view controllers on top of each other. You've got your pre-built containers that Apple provides, things like UI navigation, tab bar, and page controller. And you've got your own custom containers for those cases where what Apple provides doesn't quite fit. Let's take a look at an example of all three, starting with modal. The way modal works is you simply create your view controller and then present it from the view controller you're in, like this. That will present your new view controller modally over top of the one where it was before. Modal is really good when you want to signal to the client, hey, this is something we need to take care of. This is a change of context. So it's really best to use as a result of an action, something like an edit, where you want the user to do something in the context of this uh, view controller. And when they're done, dismiss it and go back to where they were before. You can present a view controller on a full screen if you like. That option is still there. Simply come in and on the view controller you're about to present, change the modal presentation style to full screen, rerun the application, and voila, your view controller will now take over the entire screen. The other kind of navigation we have within iOS are the controllers that Apple's built for us to make navigation easier. These are things like the UI navigation controller, tab bar controller, and page controller. The UI navigation controller is pretty core to most iOS applications. You see this all over the place. For example, in settings, when you click general, this is a navigation controller that lets you drill down into the details of whatever it is you're looking at and drill back up to where you were before. UI navigation view controllers are like stacks. You basically continuously push view controllers onto the navigation controller and then pop them off when you're done. You'll know you're in a UI navigation controller when you see this navigation uh, title at the top. And as you subsequently drill in, the mechanic is push and pop. So when you have the new view controller that you'd like to present, you push that onto your navigation controller. Navigation controller is so core, it's actually a part of every view controller as an optional. So you simply unwrap it, push the view controller you'd like to present, and that will then present that on the screen. Once you're finished, whatever it is you're doing on the screen, you once again get the navigation controller and go pop, and that will walk you back up the stack to where you were before. UI navigation controllers are great at providing more information. So use them when you want to drill into something and provide more and more context for where you are. And then when you're finished, whatever it is you do, simply pop and walk back up. It's really contextual, walking you in, walking you out, but a really handy navigation control for just drilling into more information. Another controller Apple provides for us is the UI tab bar controller. And this one's really neat. Here you pass in an array of view controllers that you'd like to present, and the view controller associates them with all the different buttons along the bottom by index. So the very first view controller would be zero, the second one would be one, and the third one two. In code that would look like this. Simply create the view controllers you'd like to present, pass them in as an array of view controllers, and then the tab view controller takes care of the rest. When you tap the buttons at the bottom, it simply switches between those view controllers you passed in based on the index. In this case, zero and one. And finally, we have the page view controller, which is just like the tab view controller in that it also takes an array of view controllers, zero indexed, meaning zero, one, and two. The only logic we need to provide here is which view controller to present based on the direction that the user swipes. So if the user swipes left, we need to figure out what the view controller was before. And if the user swipes right, we need to know what's the view controller after. To create your own page controller, simply extend the UI page view controller, implement its data source and control delegate protocols. Uh, remember to set yourself up as the delegate. And then basically just the one thing you need to understand is there is a control at the bottom here. You see these two dots? that something is called a page control. And that's what enables you to swipe left and swipe right. And how the page controller knows which view controller to display based on a left or a right swipe are through these methods here, 
Here's the view control before and the view controller after. And this is just the one place where you do need to provide a little bit of logic uh, to figure out what index you're actually at based on where you are in the swiping and also how to handle getting to the end, whether or not you want to wrap all the way around to the beginning or just stop and not enable them to wrap around the end. But that's kind of how the view eye page control works. Super handy for onboarding, for uh, when people first start up your application and you're presenting something informational. Very handy control just for swiping back and forth and then ultimately dismissing just like any other view controller. So one key takeaway from all these containers we're talking about is just to understand that these containers Apple provides are just regular view controllers with custom views. For example, the UI navigation view controller is just a view at the top with some view controllers underneath. That's it. Just a little bit of logic to figure out what to display and when, but it's just a custom view with some view controllers, and there's no reason why we can't create these things ourselves. So when one of the standard containers doesn't give you the navigation you like, that's where you can create your own, and we call that a custom container. Let's take a look at an example. Say we have a workflow where someone's gonna come in, activate a device, and then depending upon whether that succeeds or fails, either take them back to the beginning of our screens or dismiss the entire container in itself. To do that, there's a couple things we need to keep track of. One, what's our navigation state? Here we could use a simple enum just to track on which state we're in and then use that logic when we go to display. We could have a method that takes a look at our state and then figures out what view controller to display using all of our previous presentation techniques we looked at earlier. Now, the one thing just to be aware of when you do this is you need to do the following when presenting a child view controller within a container. First, you have to move the child's view controller view into the parent's view. Then you need to add that view controller as a child. And then thirdly, you need to notify that child that it was moved to the parent. Apple provides documentation around this, and this is just the one trick you need to be aware of when adding a view controller into a container. This is what enables all the view controller's lifecycle stuff, like view did load, view will end. All that stuff will function correctly so long as you wire it up like this. And there's also similar three steps for when you're removing. In code, that would all look something like this. Here I'm in the container view controller, and you can see here, here I've got my navigation state. So this is basically keeping track in an enum which state we're in. Then I'm basically going to create my own navigation controller in my container here. And what I do want to use here is a navigation controller as part of my container, and that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to go ahead and create that, go through all the regular view controller stuff, and then basically at some point when the view did load, I'm going to need to figure out what view controller should I present based on the state that we're in. So this is the method that's gonna switch on our state, and this is the logic that we're, where we're gonna figure out what view controller to present based on the state that we're in. Now, if this is a real uh, application, I would probably be doing some network calls, and based on the state of those calls and success or fail, uh, present the appropriate one. But for this demo, we've just hard-coded what's gonna happen. So basically, as I click through Activate, and as I get onto the Activating screen, when I hit activate now, I'm just going to assume there was success and I'm just going to take myself back to the ready to activate. But that's all logic that we can create and control the flow of ourselves. That's really, really cool. Here's that one magic method I was talking to you about, or here's the three things you need to do whenever you do present a child view controller into a container. You just have to remember to present the child like this, add the child view controller like this, and then notify the child that it was moved to the parent. That's only the real trick to understand with these things. But so long as you do this, you'll be able to present children view controllers within your own custom containers. The key thing to remember with all this navigation stuff is that how you present affects how you navigate. Meaning if you present something modally with a present, you just have to dismiss it with a dismiss. And if you're in a container, like a UI navigation controller, and you're pushing things onto the stack, the way you walk back and ultimately dismiss yourself is with a pop. And of course, for those cases where nothing Apple provides quite works, we can create our own custom containers. And that really gives us a lot of the full on flexibility we need to create our own unique experiences within our applications. Anyways, I hope you like this episode. If you do hit like, please do subscribe. Be sure to check the show notes for where you can find the source code for everything you've seen here. 
And if you'd like to be notified, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Jay Rasmussen. All right. Thanks for coming, everyone. We'll see you next time.